On this short stack, we'll be talking about Spider-Man, the clone conspiracy, number one. I'm going to save it to any good in five minutes or less. Clone Conspiracy number one by Dan Slott and Jim Chung opens up at the funeral of Jay Jameson, Aunt, May, Aunt May's husband. At the funeral, J. Jonah Jameson is blaming Peter Parker for the death of Jay because Peter uh, actually vetoed a potentially life-saving process. Uh, New Yu has been using organically grown human tissue and organs to, to help people. However, we find out later in the book that when Peter encountered one of his employees that had this process done, whenever he touched him, his spider sense went off, so he didn't trust it, so he vetoed it on Jay Jameson. From the funeral, Peter takes a trip to Oklahoma to visit Jerry, who is the, the Parker Industries employee that had the process done with New You. When he arrives at, at his residence, he finds out that Jerry's not there. So New You guys came and took him away. And we find out that through Emma, through, through Emma, Jerry's wife, that they went camping and Jerry didn't take his New You medicine with him. And by not taking his medicine, we find out that his cell started to break down and he was starting to lose his form. And that is Peter's first tip off that something's not right with this whole process. So as Spider-Man, he goes to New You and he, he, he says it's not technically breaking in because New You has wanted to be part of Parker Industries for a while, but it's breaking in. He goes and he's looking around different rat, different labs and he realizes that this is very mad science uh, organization type stuff and he's very worried about what's going on. So Peter drops down from the air ducts and finds this chamber where Jerry is actually being regrown from the ground up. It's really weird and creepy because he's just eyeballs and veins. But he turns around and he finds out that Miles Warren is there. And of course we all know Miles Warren is the jackal who is big in the whole clone thing. And Miles calls for security. But who's the security? but the Rhino and the new female Electro. They fight Spider-Man for a couple pages and Jim Chung's art is just on point in this. He was definitely the right choice for this event. He, uh, whenever Spider-Man is moving around the page, it's not just one image of him. It's, it actually gets like a, an after image effect, which really lends to the whole spider agility and the spider speed. He beats, uh, he beats, not Shocker, he beats Electro and Rhino and he keeps going and he keeps wondering just how Miles is bringing everybody back and what's going on with this whole new you. And before he can get to the end of it, he encounters Gwen Stacy. And he goes, okay, this is weird. My spider sense isn't going off. This is wrong. I know it's wrong, but I, I don't know what to do. And before anything else can happen, his spider sense goes off and Dr. Doctor Octopus attacks him. And that's where the issue leaves, leaves off. It's a lot of fun. Dan, leave it to Dan Slott, who has been on Spider-Man now for several years and he's he's well known to troll fans and to have fun and he really takes some bad storylines and redeems them and that's exactly what he's doing with the clone conspiracy he's saying you guys didn't want the maximum clonage stuff with with Ben Riley and Kane well I'm gonna make it cool in 2016 and now we have this really cool epic story being told and like I said before Jim Chung's art is just fantastic and before you think that I'm giving too much away, there's also a six-page backup at the end from Gwen Stacy's point of view, and you need to check this book out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me on this episode. I hope you liked it. As always, please like and subscribe. We have a lot of cool stuff coming your way. Don't forget to visit us also on comicplunder.com, and that's going to do it for me. I'll see you on the next round.